In this video, I'm going to show you how to map a data file to the CDOC CRM ontology. So let me start by loading a sample data file from the Smithsonian Museum. It's a JSON file and I'm going to load uh, only 10,000 records. So here's the file. It has uh, information about the identifier of the object, the title of the object, the language that the object is in, and then the type of object, you know, text and dictionaries and archived materials, etc. So the first thing that I'm going to do is define a URI for my objects. So I'm going to do that by defining a Python transformation. So I'm going to call it uh, record identifier, identifier URI. And here I'm going to type my uh, Python expression. So I want the URI to be object uh, slash and then whatever is the ID that I get from the Smithsonian Museum and I'm going to append the uh, slice ident identifier to it. Uh, I can preview the results of my Python transformation, so it's going to look like this, object, uh, then the, the ID, and then identifier. So I approve this, so I say OK, and then I get a new column with these URIs. Uh, I'm going to set my uh, base URI for all my data objects to be Eden slash SI slash, so Eden Smithsonian Museum uh, uh, dot SI, and I approve it. Uh, now, uh, I should define the URIs for all the other entities in my data file. Uh, but uh, I don't want to do that here online, so I'm just going to uh, load it from a file that I defined previously, the PyTransforms. So I say OK, and uh, I get uh, all my other URIs. So let me start to map the data. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to define the semantic type. <clears throat> Karma always offers me suggestions based on what I did before. So the first suggestion is that this is the URI of a CRM E42 identifier, and uh, this is correct, so I'm going to accept the suggestion. So now I have a little model that says that the data in this column is the URI of an identifier. So let me map this column. So I define its semantic type. And the suggestion is that it is the label of an identifier. This is correct. Now, if it was not correct, then I could hit here the edit button and then define the property and the class that is appropriate. So in this case, it's already set to the right values because Karma learned from pre previous uh, use. So I'm going to say save. So now I uh, have this, and it says that I have an identifier. The first column has the label of the identifier, and the second column has the URI. Uh, so let me now go here and say that this is the URI of a man-made object. Again, Karma offers the right suggestion. Uh, the other suggestions are uh, also computed based on some of the values in the column. So let me accept this because this is correct and hit save and then Karma connects it and it says that the identifier uh, shows features of the man-made object and this is not correct so I can click here and add an outgoing link. Uh, my link is going to go to the identifier and Karma always shows me uh, the, the properties that are compatible based on the definitions on the domain and range in the ontology, and then all the other properties here uh, in case uh, I want to choose one that overrides the domain and range. In this case, uh, here the top choice is the correct one, so the, the, the man-made object is identified by this identifier, so I click Save and then I get my mod. Uh, so it says that I have a man-made object, this is its URI, 
and it's identified by this identifier. Uh, so let me go to the title. So the title, I'm going to again do a set semantic type. And again, the suggestion is correct, and it says that this is the label of a title. So I'm going to accept that and hit Save. And uh, uh, I got this, it's the label of the title. And then Karma suggests that the identifier has this title. Uh, this is not quite correct, so I'm going to fix it. Uh, I'm going to change the from uh, and say that the title belongs to the man-made object. And so now I have a man-made object that has a title. Uh, I can define the URI for my internal object. Uh, and then this says again, the suggestion is correct. It's the URI of a title. So I'm going to click that. And uh, now I have a little model that uh, is starting to take shape. I have a man-made object. It has a title. It's identified by this and so on. So uh, I'm, I'm going to complete the model, but I'm going to do it quickly and then show you how to generate the, the RDF. So now I have my complete model. So now that I have defined the model, I can uh, publish RDF. And uh, I can do this uh, going here to RDF and say publish RDF. Uh, I'm going to publish it to the repository. I'm going to replace the existing data. And I hit publish and here's my RDF. And I, I can take a look at it. And uh, you know, this is uh, n triples. Uh, and here's my, uh, with my prefix and so on. And you know, I get lots of RDF. Uh, one of the cool things I can do in Karma is I can also generate JSON-LD. Uh, so I can do that uh, by going here and saying export JSON. Uh, and I'm going to tell it that uh, I want the uh, you know, nice identifiers. And I do that by constructing the context from the model. And uh, if I look at my JSON, then I can uh, really read what's going on. So here's the first object. Uh, it's a man-made object. Here's its URI. Here's the title object. Uh, and here's the sub language part and so on. And I get all my data in JSON-LD, which then I can load to a sort of traditional NoSQL database like MongoDB or uh, <coughs> you know, elastic search or whatever. And uh, this is my model. It's so uh, nice and very understandable. So that's it. Thanks for your attention.